to my channel. It's your fave bookish tita, your tita Kate. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about books that I plan to reread in 2021. So I love rereading books for three reasons. First, I love spotting all of those references and foreshadowing and clues that the author set out that I didn't spot in my first read and then relating them to the ending of the story. I love being able to see all of those moments where there was a clue or a moment where characters were actually falling in love with each other or a tidbit that turns out to be like super important to the conclusion. I absolutely live for that shit. It gives me this sense of immense satisfaction to see that kind of foreshadowing and then see how it's relevant or how it plays out at the end of the book. I really enjoy going over all of those things again in my second, third, sometimes maybe even my fourth reread of a book. Second reason why I love rereading books is that I am a forgetful reader. If a sequel or a third or fourth book in a series is coming out, I have to reread the first book or the book that preceded it in order to remember what happened and where are the characters now, what are the stakes so far. So just to give myself that recollection before the book comes out, like the sequel or the third or fourth book comes out, I often, actually not often, I always reread the first book just so that I can refresh myself. And the third reason why I love rereading books, and this is more of a conscious decision that I'm doing this year, is that I would like to be assured that at least once a month this year, I read a book that I'm going to five star and that I love. I mean, I've had months last year and even in 2019 where an entire month went by and I didn't have a single five star read. And I'm not all about that this year. I mean, this year is still pretty wild. There's still some really wild stuff going on. I mean, obviously the pandemic isn't over. Politics is really wild no matter what country you're from. There's so much strife going on. So, you know, just to give myself that little ray of sunshine every month, I want to be guaranteed that I have at least one five-star read. And one of the surefire ways to do that for me is to reread books that I know that I will enjoy. These are books that I've already previously five-starred, so I can be assured of the fact that, you know, I'm going to enjoy them. So let's get into my list of books that I will be rereading this year. First on my list is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Now, this book was published earlier in 2020, and I feel like I haven't shut up about this book since it came out, but it deserves it. It is really amazing. It is one of the best, and I'm talking about the best, military fantasies I've ever read right up there with the poppy war like honestly it is just really that good and it's based on West African mythology it was inspired by West African mythology and is all about magic dragons colonization and it also features some of the best fight scenes I've ever read now the sequel to this book the fires of vengeance came out late last year I think around November and Orbit was kind enough to send me a copy and I included that book in my last video which was a haul from the books that I received at the end of 2020. I'm gonna link it up here, go check it out. And like I said earlier, I'm that dumb bitch who just doesn't remember what happened, especially if it's been a while since I read the book. And I read this in January 2020. I read this like a year ago. So before I dive into The Fires of Vengeance, the sequel, I wanna reread this just to make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything and that I'm not reading Fires of Vengeance and wondering like, what the fuck is going on? What's happening now? Next I have here another Orbit book, or two Orbit books rather, and that's The Wolf of Oren Yarrow and Ikisar Falcon by K.S. Villoso. Another set of books that I have not shut up about since they came out and the third book, The Dragon of Jin Sayang, comes out this May, I think. This May. I do not remember, and I do not have my calendar on hand. But just like with The Rage of Dragons, this is a book series that I need to refresh myself on. And I think I read the Ikisar Falcon when it first came out, because I got an e-arc last year, so that was six months ago. There's no way all of that information stayed in my head. But here's the thing that's really great about these books. So I was really pleasantly surprised when I started reading The Ikisar Falcon, which is a sequel to The Wolf of Oren Yarrow. It has a part, the first part of the book, at the beginning of the book, that's called The Story So Far. And basically this part just 
recaps, you know, uh, what happened in the Wolf of Oranyaro. So I think that there's going to be something similar in the Dragon of Jinsayang where it recaps everything that happened in the Ikisar Falcon. But still, I would like to refresh myself and recall all of the important details that have happened so far. But thank you so much to, you know, Kay and the Orbit team for including that synopsis at the very front of the book of the Ikisar Falcon. I wish that was like a thing that more authors did because it would be super helpful. Like, super helpful. <music>
when the cover of the second book came out that it was such a powerful looking cover and it was similar to the vein of this one which is, I mean that's a pretty powerful looking cover right so I'm super excited to reread this in time for the second book released this year Speaking of releases I can't wait for, later this year, Jade Legacy, the third book in the Greenbone Saga, will be released. And of course, because of that, I would like to reread Jade City and Jade War. I finally have hardback copies of these books. I read somewhere that Jade Legacy, the third book, is going to span 20 years, and I am not ready for that. Not ready in the slightest, so I am going to prepare myself for the pain by reading these babies. In case you don't know what Jade City and Jade War are about, although that's really weird because, you know, all of Twitter has been shouting about it, this takes place in a fictionalized universe where there is a gem called Jade, but rather than just being, you know, the decorative jewelry that your auntie likes to wear, Jade bestows the wearers with powers that enhance their strength, their speed, their agility, but it only does that for certain people. For other people, it makes them, like, really wild it, it makes them go mad eventually so the flow of jade is controlled by these gangster clans and these clans are the focus of the story of these two books and of the third book the thing that i love the most about this series is that it originally started out as like gangster fiction fantasy gangster fiction but it eventually became like commentary on globalization so you know i love that i love it when politics makes its way into books so I am super excited to reread this and to read the third book, but also I'm sure it's going to be painful, so... Next is a book I've been meaning to reread for a while because I read the e-art, but I haven't read my finished copy yet, and that is The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Azad. Now this is a beautiful, very unapologetically Muslim book about a girl who hosts the spirit of an ifrit and she eventually falls in love with an ifrit bodyguard so yes this is kind of bodyguard romance i love it and it's basically forced proximity which leads to initial attraction and then eventually they love each other i just love it it's very slow burn and it's very descriptive like like i said i love books that are lush in their writing and super descriptive so that's one reason well one of the reasons why i love this book so much and it's got a great cast of characters they're very believably written and i remember really loving the e-arc so much that i got myself a finished copy last year but i haven't gotten around to reading the finished copy yet so i'm definitely gonna do that this year last but not least i would like to reread descendant of the crane now i know that there has been intense controversy regarding the publisher and i am just glad that the author has finally found a publisher with her second book that is treating her well or seems to be treating her well so i'm just really sad that all of that shit went down with the author and with the publisher of this book so i really suggest that if you're going to get yourself a new copy of descendant of the crane you do it via the uk publisher just to make sure that the money that you pay ends up you know going to the author and also you know just to show support towards an author in a sort of conflict with the publisher who did not treat her well so descendant of the crane was one of my favorite reads of 2019 i had an e-arc but just like some of the other books here i have not read the finished copy yet i got my finished copy early last year I haven't managed to reread it yet, but now I'm finally going to do that. So that's it. Those are the books that I am rereading in 2021. If you're rereading or reading for the first time any of these books, please leave me a comment. If you've read any of these books, have any thoughts on them, also leave me a comment. If you're doing some rereading in 2021 and you have a similar list or you know you have some books that you would like to reread this year, also leave me a comment. I'd love to talk about it. If you've made it this far into the video, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and click the notification button, the little bell in the corner, so that you'll know the next time that I upload a video. Don't forget to subscribe to my other accounts. So I have a self-hosted blog, yourtitakate.com. I'm also on Twitter and on Instagram. Follow me on there for more updates. That is it for now. I will see you next time. Stay fresh. Love from your fave, Tita. Thank you.